Hello and thanks for joining the midweek edition of Journalist Hangout, your favorite program on TV. I'm Ayodele Ozubakun. Today on the program, political analysts predict tight governorship races in key northeast and north central states. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju and Olayika Oyegbile. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Well, the war on terror has raged on in Nigeria's northeast for years. But this weekend, another kind of war takes center stage. There is palpable tension in states in the region as political parties step up campaigns for battles in the governorship election on Saturday. In races, analysts predict to be tight in Cuban governors of Adamawa, Bochi, and Taraba states will be up against formidable foes in the election. In Brownu, Yobe and Gombe states, the battle will be no less intense as new sets of candidates struggle to succeed Kashim Shatima, Ibrahim Gaydam and Ibrahim Dakwambo who are completing their attempts. It is a similar scenario in the North Central geopolitical zone as Governor Sam Otom of Benue, Simon Lalong of Plateau State and Abuba Kassani Belu of Niger, Niger State will face stiff opposition to keep their seats. So let's start from Borno State. Babajide, Borno State, it has been, you know, um, in the news for because of the activity of Boko Haram yes. since 2009 and Borno State and uh, that has hindered development, that has stifled so many things. But in spite of that, the outgoing governor still gave a kind of good account of himself. Yes. And they had internal crisis along the line, but they are stronger, they are together now. I think um, um, Sharif is back to the APC. Yes. Um, in, in Bono State now. Mm. So what are the factors that will be playing out on Saturday? Bono State is a one-party state. What we should be talking about now is the margin by which the APC will win the election in Bono State. One-party state? It's a one-party state. It's a one, almost completely a one-party state. PDP has no presence mm. in that oh. state. And what they usually do, you don't even hear about the APC, uh, PDP until election time. They will go and stay in Abuja. When the election time comes, then they will crawl out of the woodworks and say they want to contest. Contest what? It's a one-party state. It is the margin of the victory that we should be speculating over. Because that one is going to be a walk in the park for Professor uh, 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 Zulum. And is someone who is already very familiar with the way government runs. Because the rebuilding process that Governor Shetima uh, instituted, he's been able to do it with Zulum as the brain box, with, his, with Zulum the as the conductor of the orchestra of rebuilding hmm. in that state. So as the conductor of the uh, orchestra of rebuilding in Borno State, Governor Shetima made the right choice by backing him to become the next governor of the state. And we are already expecting that he will outperform his, uh, his boss because even in dangerous areas, you have to restrain him to not go and start work there. That's the nature of the person he is, and he's extremely frugal. He drives his own car, put your money in his hands. He's not interested in any bribe. He just happens to be very frugal and very decent and honest. The governor had to personally withdraw his jalopy from him <laughs> because that's the vehicle that he preferred to, to drive. He, didn't, he doesn't have a house of his own. They had to find a place for him in the government house find an accommodation for him in the government was as the uh, 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 candidate of the party. People want to do, to do business with the party, I mean with the government when you come in, because you will come in. They need a place where they can reach you. So they have to find an accommodation for, for Zulum somewhere inside government house. 
or he doesn't have a house of his own. Are you for real? I'm telling you, this, this is a man that I saw, the man that I met. And you can ask people in Borno State. Hmm. There are decent people in Nigeria. It's not only the president who is honest. There are some Nigerians who can't believe the level of their honesty. I've mentioned the Daku before, the retired uh, brigadier general. Go and ask about uh, Ahmed Daku. All he's interested in is just to go and do his, uh, his uh, mandatory prayers as a Muslim. You can't bribe him. I offer him money. He's not interested. You can't use women to bribe him. There are Nigerians like that. Mm. So I'm happy. This one is we don't need to waste time on. So it's a one party state. The winner has already emerged before the election. I'll be, uh, Just as you say, the winner has emerged before course, the election. Of course. In, in Borno State, there's virtually no contest. Because in the last election, the APC won with 836,496. And PDP had only 71,788. So now, and as we say, every election is local. If the presidential, which you can say is far away, if the president, who you can say is far away from them, is in Abuja, can get 836,000, what about the governorship? I mean, is, as he said, it is just a one-party state and hmm. simple and great. Hmm. And uh, I want to say, the Professor Zulum has, um, has emerged as the Jack and Day of Borno State. We remember. <laughs> I mean, these are men of who are... Of the of Ocean State. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> who are very frugal. And the other day, when I read his biodata, I was amazed. That, so there are still people like this yes. in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. And especially people... Uh, he is well-educated. Mm. He's a prof he professor. Was, he was so, rector of uh, Ramat Polytechnic. So you can't say that uh, mm -hmm. he doesn't know what he's doing. In Borno State, there is no contest. In fact, the governor is chief candidate. He's, he's governor elect yes. already. Congratulations, <laughs> Professor <laughs> Babagana Omar Azulum. <laughs> Till Saturday, Jiden. We are waiting, for, <laughs> me, I'm <laughs> waiting <laughs> for the inauguration. <laughs> because he has won. He's a foregone conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bochi State. The. Um, <laughs> This particular state, don't forget, this is a state that we, um, the Speaker of the House of Representatives mm. is from, and he, mm -hmm. he emerged in his own um, uh, is it Senate, uh, yes, yeah, federal constituency. Federal constituency. Mm -hmm. Yes, he emerged in his own federal constituency, but it's an APC controlled state. GD, mm. what is happening about you? Bauchi State, I project Bauchi State as too close to call. The governor has lost tremendous support among APC members. A lot of them defected, remember? One senator died, the remaining two senators left the party. Mm -hmm. Now, the governor has brought back to his side the last two governors of the state. That's uh, Mazu mm -hmm. and Yuguda. Uh, Yuguda. Both of them spent eight years each in office. He brought them back. That is credit to him. But the support that he has lost is very significant. Where you have crisis, where you have crisis in a party in the state, it's always difficult for that incumbent government to win. Mm -hmm. And significantly, PDP got a very formidable uh, a candidate to tackle the governor, and that's the Bala the former FCT minister. Okay, yes. okay. He's the longest serving FCT minister. Mm. The longest serving FCT minister. Because Jonathan gave him that job in 20, 2009 as acting president. Yes. And he lasted till 2015. Mm. So oh, that should tell you With that enough he, he has resources. Mm. He has resources and is popular. Acts around in, uh, in that state. The thing is, the president, yes, the president has raised up Emi Abaka's hand. That is significant. But it won't stop some uh, PDP members, I mean APC members, from voting against the governor because of the crisis that they've had. That crisis led even people like uh, the, uh, the speaker to leave. And there were 
many others who left like that. So he's been struggling to to hold uh, um, the party together. Significantly, too, this Bala, Bala defeated Ahmed Moazu, um, the former governor. He defeated Moazu. Moazu wanted to go to the Senate. No, it's not Moazu. Uh, uh, Yuguda. Hmm? Is it Moazu or Yuguda? Mo you has Moazu in 2007. Okay, okay, okay. In okay. 2007. Okay, okay. okay. He wanted to go to the Senate mm. after ruling uh, oh, for two terms. Two terms. Mm. It was this Bala that defeated him. In the primary. You know he was a senator. Mm. He won that election. Mm. It was, it, it defeated him. So he's strong, he's strong and um, I expect um, a very stiff contest. Honestly, I can't yeah. at this stage say the governor will win. Well, is a is a very close contest. I agree, but somehow uh, I want to give. I want to believe also that the electorates are usually very very uh, choosy when it comes to things like this. You will remember the National Assembly and the presidency had a lot of disagreement whether. The state assemblies should come first, the governorship and state assemblies should come first, or the presidential. The reason is that everyone is afraid of what we call the bandwagon effect. Mm -hmm. Now, the president has won. I don't see, except a state that is, uh, what language do I use now? Is it rabbit? In rabbit opposition to the APC or to the mm. presidency mm. that will want to vote against him or against the party uh, that has won at the center. So I foresee a situation where this, the, the race will be tight and the Bauchi people will not want to lose the federal support. Mm. So based on that, I think... Abubakar may have a slight edge. edge and win. Okay, let's wait and see. Going to Adamawa State. Adamawa State is going to be particularly interesting. Jide, we have uh, um, uh, the uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar is from that state. Yes. And um, the, the governor is an APC governor. Mm. But we gather that the People's Democratic Party is waxing so strong, not forgetting the political machinery of the Inyaku. Yeah. Well, I, I think the, the son, Senator Yako, is now in yes. ADC. Yes. So it's going to be a very, very, um, it's a state to watch out for. Yeah, um, Governor uh, Bindo, Jibrila Mohamed Bindo, is a product of the Yako group. The Yako group sponsored him against Atiku Abaka's candidate in the APC shadow election. Two times he defeated Atiku's candidate and he became governor. And later on, they fell apart. They fell apart and it's been crisis all along. See, if it was simply the Uyako tendencies within the party that the governor had issues with, mm. he could say no problem. But outside of Uyako and his people who have left the party, and Uyako, uh, was the strongest politician in that state before he left. Mm. The politician with the tremendous structures and all that, he left. We still have other, others too, mm. who are also against the, the governor. People like Nuri Badu, mm -hmm. they do not support the governor. People like Baba Shilawa, mm. you know? SGF. Yes. So many of them, it's been one crisis after another. You saw the way their primaries went. Now, They've been appealing to people like Nuri Badu to go. Some of them have chosen to just stay in Abuja because they don't want to help the governor. Mm. Yes, some of those big people, they don't want to assist the governor, so they've chosen to stay back. And unfortunately for him, in this contest, with a part of the PDP gone with Babame Mongoro, Yako, the, I mean, a part of the APC gone with Babame Mongoro, the PDP remains. And you have the, the article factor. The article factor, whether you like it or not, it is strong. He won the election, he won yeah. the presidential election in the state. 
against some of the earlier posts on Facebook that he lost his polling unit, he lost this, he lost that. Those were lies. He won, obviously. obviously. In fact, he won the polling unit by a wide margin. But well, they posted, I see some, some of our friends who come to this program, <laughs> even posted recently that Atiku lost his polling unit. I say, people who are not current, they will post what they like. He didn't lose his polling unit, he won the election. You know? So he's, th he's still a factor in that state. And then coupled with the crisis that the governor has had, remember even the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, younger brother of the first lady, yeah, yeah. is also against him. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been dragging I this for, for, for so long. So mm -hmm. it's looking like Oshun being replayed, in my view. Mm. Oshun being replayed, because Oshun was simply APC against APC. All those people that made APC to not score an outright victory in the yeah. governorship election. Yeah, those they were those who left mm. the party. Mm. And that's why I always warn them to clear the mess that they have. Repair the, 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 the I mean, uh, resolve the crisis that you have because the consequences could be really, really bad. Mm. So this is what we have. We have something that looks like Oshun now because the heavyweights, heavyweights in the, in the APC in Adamawa, they are refusing to work for the governor. Where is the um, general Bubamarwa? Bubamarwa is on the side, uh, of the, uh, more or less on the side of the, go of the governor of the because government. it's on the side of the president. Yes. Okay. Then the SGF is on the side of, um, of the governor, the current SGF, Boss Mustafa. Okay. But all those ones against Babame Mongoro, they, they, they are insignificant. They don't have the political influence that that old man has. Hmm. They don't. Yaku. They don't. Yaku, Yaku is wrong. Someone who can bring uh, Bendo to defeat Atiku's candidate two times, you can't you can dismiss that kind of person. His own son, Abdulaziz, may not win the election. I don't see him winning the election. But he will spoil APC's yeah. votes. Hmm. And all of them, when you, spoke, you speak to them, the diehard Babami Mongoro supporters, this is what they are saying. They say, we are diehard Buharis. We we'll support Buhari in the election. But in the governorship election, even if he talks to us tomorrow, we will not support the governor. That is the situation. So the governor is there, is, uh, is, is going to have to fight his battles. Mm -hmm. And that is why this, this race, I'm not going to give it to the governor, because in a free and fair contest, mm -hmm. he may even lose. In a free and fair contest. Jinka? Yes, that's true. What is plain in Adama's says. He, he, he has so many things working against him. Those who have defected from the party, who have go, go, gone to another party, they are just like, we know we will not win, but we will also make sure Spoilers. you don't win. Mm. Uh, Spoiler, yeah. <laughs> so that is exactly what is going to play out in, in that state. And it's very unfortunate because when parties begin to have crisis, mm. that is the time for them to begin to plan or to begin to solve the problem. You don't say no, nobody matters. Mm. Because no matter how insignificant the person is, there will be two or three people who will go with him. Mm. And the exactly. Mm. Those who go with him, we mm. also have people who will go with them. Yes. So mm. the case of Adamawa now, <laughs> Saturday will decide. I can't mm. put my finger on it to say this is what is going to happen. Yobe states, Yobe states, the governor will be wrapping up. No, it's a new governor that will be coming in. The, yeah, um, the, the awesome. national secretary of the of the party. Uh, well, yes, all yes, the governor, yes. governor Gedam is wrapping up, mm. and uh, the uh, former national secretary of the APC, uh, May Malabuni. Okay, Malabuni. He will be okay. coming in. I'm congratulating him in advance. That that the, one. The case is the just like the, this case the, is the, like the, no state. There is no need for a contest. Ideally, I next should just go and give him a certificate of return. <laughs> but May Malabuni has won the election before even the, the whistle is blown. For the contest to start, the uh, APC has won the race in Yobe State. It's a straightforward. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the context. PDP in that state had just about 50, so 50 something thousand, whereas uh, the APC had 497.
Okay. So what magic will okay. there be to make? Let's let's just yeah. uh, 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 that's another walkover. It's a walkover. Yes, it is. It's I'm it's worried out. about Gombe State. Mm. The presidential election in Gombe State. Gombe State is a PDP controlled state. Yeah. Mm. The governor, the outgoing governor, is a PDP governor. Yes. <laughs> Maybe in the night, I don't know <laughs> his party. It's PDP. It's PDP. It's a PDP throughout. throughout. Mm. But it's baffling. How was Mr. President able to pull? What he put in Gombe State because of the choice of the the governorship candidates. The PDP governorship. You must get you must get your candidate right. Mm. If you don't get the candidate right, it can split the party right down the middle. That's what has happened. You will see the wave of defection. Not only did they exchange blows mm. on the day of the primaries, and it went viral. Mm. Yeah, exchange blows on the day of the primaries because of the way the primaries were conducted. Now, former deputy uh, speaker of the House of Reps, uh, Usman uh, Nafada, won. That was the choice of the governor. But other party members uh, did not like him because they accuse him of arrogance and all that. I've never met him. I don't know whether those accusations are baseless or, or they are genuine. But the truth is that the people were not happy about the choice of Nafada. So because of that, a lot of them left the party and decided to go and team up with the APC. You see, an APC that is already in Gombe, APC and PDP were neck and neck. It wasn't as if... Uh, the gap has always been wide. No. Remember in the presidential election in 2015, the people voted for Buhari, but in the governorship, they voted for their, oh, government. their government. And they won not by a wide margin. Mm -hmm. Because you can't say that they, they have tremendous support base. Mm -hmm. It's just narrow uh, edge that they have over the APC. So when a good chunk of your own people be, now begin to move into a party that has been giving you serious battle, mm -hmm. then it becomes a case of like uh, two thirds mm -hmm. facing one third. Mm -hmm. That is what we have now. And you can, uh, the, the, the candidate of the APC was the same person who contested against Dan Kwambo in 2015. Mm -hmm. So this, he lost in 2015, but I can project that he's going to win uh, hmm. This time around, so I next should prepare the certificate. Another of return. certificate of return. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> we we'll take this breather. When we we'll come back, we we'll discuss more. We are just projecting ahead of Saturday's um, governorship election across the country. We'll be right back. Thank you for being with us. It's Journalist Anga reaching you live from your TV station of the year, Television Continental. Yinka, Taraba State from Northeast. That's um, the, the last state in the um, Northeast that we are, are looking at. Governor, I forgot his name. No, no, Shaku. The Governor Shaku is of the People's Democratic Party. He is seeking um, re election. And we have the um, last uh, in 2015 mm -hmm. when Mama Taraba was still in APC, he ran against Governor Ichaku. There was a protracted legal case till the Supreme Court actually decided that case. Now Mama Taraba is running under. Mm, can why DP or so? You you pay something. Huh? Forgot it. We know we have so many. <laughs> one, of those, uh, one of those. One of those. One of those. Well, <laughs> practically. She didn't follow. She didn't follow article to. No, 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 no. PDP. Why? Ah, well, I thought the allegiance. And you know, the, at the but I'm initial sure in the stage, election, you will tell people to vote. To, exactly. That might yes, be sir. what will happen because you know she has always professed that she's supporting article. But in the contest, well, in the last election, the PDP won with uh, about fifty something thousand above what APC had. I might like to think that this contest may also go the way of what I said about Bauchi, that they might want, 
because the the distance is not too wide, mm -hmm. and they might this time around want to come to the mainstream as. People always say the mainstream of Nigerian politics, as in never to be in opposition. That really? they will want to be in AP, uh, the, since the federal government is formed by the APC. Some people might decide that look, let us vote for APC and be you know uh, and be in the federal favor. And because the the, the, the way I want you to uh, we, I want us to look at it is this. There are some other parties. For instance, we are talking now about Mama Taraba. We, we can't even remember exactly which party she belongs mm, to. It is more popular than any party. So, either. there will be mm -hmm. a situation where some people will say, look, it is a contest between PDP and APC. Rather than vote for any of those unknown parties, why don't I choose one of the two? Mm -hmm. And the likely choice might be, for some, the APC that since it is in the federal level, they might want to go with APC, or they might some might want to go with the P, uh, PDP. But I see it as a sort of a battleground. Okay, Baba, for for Saturday, Julie, mm. when you see the results that have been coming out from Taraba states, mm. you will know that you it's safe to assume that Taraba states, you know. It's like a PDP state. Even it's always been a PDP state. Yes. Since in 1999. Even yeah, President Buhari did not. Yes. Election. Yes. Yeah. And as long as the the um, Kapo, Kapo is there, hmm. that's General T. Y. Danjuma. I think he's a major factor in Taraba yes. politics. Yes, he's a major factor. And um, the governor is from his constituency, uh, Takum. Hmm. The PDP candidate is very strong. I think they got themselves a very strong candidate this time in um, Sane Danladi, who was APC. Yes, who was deputy to uh, Dambaba Danfula and Esontai, mm. the former, the okay. late, the late uh, governor. Uh, governor of the state. He's strong, but the contest in Taraba is looking like what the contest in Kaduna will be like. A kind of battle between Christians and Muslims, but unfortunately for the APC in that state, Governor Darius Sishaku is a Christian, and he will be contesting against two Muslims in um, Mama Taraba and uh, Sani Danladi. So that's why I will give him a slight edge. I expect um, the governor to win. I expect him to retain his seat. It's always been a close contest in that state. There's no election in that state that uh, uh, which is never close. But at the end of the day, PDP always triumphs. And um, in 2015, remember, he was not an incumbent. He mm. was not an incumbent. So he was not an incumbent. Sonny Danladi was the governor. Then he was the acting governor at that time. So as an incumbent, Governor Dario Sishaku has more influence, more resources, and uh, greater power to make things happen. So I'll give him a slight edge, and I project that PDP will retain the state. OK. I think let's go to the North Central now. Hmm. There's a tricky one here, Plateau States. Yiga. <laughs> oh, Plateau States. Um, Governor Lalong. Lalong. Simon Lalong. Governor Lalong, I. When the presidential election result came out, mm. you know, the Plateau State, I was born in Plateau State and I grew up there and I've lived there for several, for very long years. Was, I, I called a friend who is there and I asked him what happened. Well, his own analysis is that the PDP won the presidential because of some areas where they have some uh, uh, they have some problems with the president. 
problems in terms of the this classes that have been the admin mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was why m those ones voted against him in the presidency. But in the governorship, because Governor Lalong has been a bridge builder, sort of, he has been able to bring all the forces that have either though been fighting against themselves and uh, uh, don't see eye to eye. He yeah. has been able to bring them together. That the president and the governorship election might be a different bond game entirely. Yeah. But for me, looking at the results, I can see that uh, the, the the margin is uh, over a uh, hundred thousand or, or thereabout. Close. Ah. It is going to be real tough. Hmm. Very likely, the governor might return, but it's not going to be an easy thing. It's not going to be an it, easy thing. Exactly. It will, it will not be as easy as it was in 2015. Hmm. He may have to continue up to the last minute, appealing to all sectors and all uh, interests to, to, to tell them that, look, Give me another four years, and I will do better than you think I've done in the last four years. But actually, um, Plateau State was one of the states in 2015 that the president changed the narrative, as in, in North Central. Yes. He was able to win some North um, Central states. So four years down the line, the president did not win Plateau State this time around. Mm -hmm. Will that be rubbing off on the governorship race? No, it, it probably will have rubbed off, but... Um the PDP is not so united in the state. And again, I think they Jeremiah again the choice of, <laughs> fact, that's a the choice of 76 year old uh, Jerry Hussaini Jerry Boy. as uh, the governorship candidate has already divided the party. In fact, a lot of them, PDP members, they are guilty of anti party activities as mm. we speak. <laughs> so the contest was very close. Both of them, PDP, uh, uh, APC mm. won two. Senate seats, mm. one is inconclusive. Mm. APC won four hours of rep seats. Mm -hmm. PDP also won four hours of rep seats. Wow. So that was a close contest. But in the governorship, no matter how close it becomes, I project that Governor Simon Lailong will be re-elected. Mm. Uh, I'm very certain that that will happen. OK, that's um, in Plateau State. Nasara State actually did they, uh, you know, broke uh, the jinx mm. where Mr. President <laughs> has not had his way and slight margin, but they actually, Mr. President actually won in Nasara State. And Governor Amakura, mm. Governor Amakura is um, winding up. He's yeah. going to, he has, he's going to he's, conclude he's his senator time. Now. So the uh, senator elect now. Congratulations. Uh, a very good friend of the house. Um, so, what will be playing out in Nasara State? The yeah, Nasara, it will have been a good chance for the PDP to take that state. But um, in politics, you have to be calculative. Um, the candidate of Abga is, mm. uh, is uh, Labaran Maku. Again. Yes. The PDP candidate is also from Labaran Maku's constituency. Mm. And ideally, if Labaran Maku had agreed to step down for the PDP candidate, in my view, they will win the election. Because mm. by the time you take the densely populated satellite towns of Abuja, mm. you know, that those, those areas are heavily PDP. Yeah. You know, they, they, if by the time you take them and join the votes of the Nasara Egon and Akwanga uh, area, they should be able to win. Mm. You know, but what we have is a situation in which uh, David Ombugadu um, of the PDP, who is a House of Rest member, and Labaran yeah, Maku of Abga will split each other's votes. That's basically the Christian vote. What's the fixation about this um, Abga? Abga thing? Uh, he, just, he just hey, doesn't, you know, he doesn't, want, to, he he doesn't he... want to stay in the PDP. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, there are people who want to be the, the, the biggest fish in the pond. They want to have an exclusive tough yeah. for themselves. And there's no way you can be in PDP and expect that 
you have an exclusive talk to yourself because yeah. there are many masters in the PDP. In the PDP yeah. So when you go to a lesser party, mm -hmm. then you run things, you do things the way you like, nobody will harass you and all that. So maybe that's why he has gone there and he found his chances. <laughs> but what will happen is that he will, he, some of the votes that should go to his brother, mm -hmm. uh, David, David, will go to him. By the time they split each other's votes, by the time they knock each other's heads together, Abdullah Isule will be coasting home to victory as the candidate of the APC. Abdullah Isule was the head of um, Dangote's uh, sugar refinery. Mm -hmm. So he has to watch just tremendous support from the incumbent, tremendous support from his boss, Raja Aliko Dangote, and the promise of further industrialization of Nasara State. Street. That should tempt many voters to vote for him. So I project that APC will retain Nasarawa State. I also think that, uh, by and large, the governor has been able to do a lot of things for the state. He has uh, done uh, the advantage of being close to the federal capital. He has maximized it. All these towns that are close to the federal capital is yeah, making sure, towns. the yeah. satellite town that is making sure development are getting there. So he has been able to uh, warm his way into the heart of the people and uh, this election will just be an easy one for the, his successor to win and it, it, the, the, the contest is over. Benway states, Baba Jide. Oh. Hmm. Benway. Governor Otom giving it a shot again? Yes, Governor Otom is seeking the election and he has retired. I'm, um, I'm confident I will be elected. I've heard people say all sorts that, oh, this is the time that uh, Akume will stop him. Since he stopped Akume, uh, the, uh, Akume will stop him too from being re-elected. If an incumbent governor was so strong enough as to defeat his own godfather, mm. and not only was his godfather defeated, his godfather was defeated by a wide margin. Mm -hmm. His godfather won only one local government in the entire senatorial zone. So people don't put all of these things together because they just they are just about emotions, emotions, emotions. No, because politics is not simply about emotions. The truth is that he's an incumbent governor. He's strong, whether we like it or not. He's strong. Yes, the contest in terms of the numbers it was quite close. Mm. But they clinch all the senatorial seats. Mm. It's not only it's not one parameter alone mm. that you use. You look, you you see? The, uh, mm. the, look at the, uh, the structure on ground. People, the people were saying that the race between Atiku and the, the, the president was not close. They were simply looking at numbers. They are not looking at spread. Mm. These are people. Who, they are not literate in in political. Uh, Nineteen states and seventeen now. states. So, by the time you add Abuja. Mm. Mm. That has the status more or less of a state. Mm. That means he had 18. Yes. 18 to the president's 19. In 19. And in mm. their dreams, they are still saying it's not close. So you see the way one track reasoning is a problem in analyzing <laughs> it. One track reasoning, because if it's one track reasoning, it leads to streets to an error. <laughs> so, so that is the thing. Some of those uh, who are. <laughs> uh, who have made a career out of uh, trying to punch out what they are saying, baselessly. So the issue is this man will win the election in Benue State. It's not about emotions. We may not like him as an individual. We may not like his methods. But if the people want his methods, his if his people want to continue with him, so be it. That's the beauty of democracy. I think some people in Benue State are not happy with the PMB-led administration. Yes, How and they are also handled. not happy with the way Akume appeared, appeared to, to, Want to be the throw his own people under the bus. Yes. Hmm. But there was an incident where he claimed that uh, Benue people were responsible for the killing of, of those the, uh, the, yes, clerics. The clerics. A lot of people are not happy hmm. about that. Hmm. They are not happy about that. And I warned on this program that he shouldn't have spoken like that because it could backfire. Let him go back and play what I said on that day. That like could buffer the it could get the people to vote against him. And that's what has happened. So I project that Governor Tom will be re-elected, no matter how slim the margin. Quickly, Niger States. <sighs> There's no election in Kogi States. <laughs> so we skipped um, Kogi States. In Niger, mm. of course, uh, the results are very clear. 
the APC we have the day because in the uh, contest in the last contest they have almost triple what the PDP had mm -hmm. and in this in this thing what you look at is what the the governor has been able to do in his own locality mm -hmm. if the president can get that much what about the governor who is uh, I think Niger is about the biggest state. Yes, the la uh, largest in, 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 by landmass. In, in by landmass, land yes. Yeah. So, I think it's a foregone conclusion. The the, the governor Be Ibelo is uh, San Ibelo is, is is on his way back. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, uh, interestingly, is the same people contested one another, against one another in, in uh, 2015. Yeah. Mm. Two sons of retired uh, Retire soldiers, uh, Colonel San Ibelo. He's the father uh, of the incumbent governor. The incumbent governor is an in-law to Abdul Salame Abaka. General Abdul Salame's uh, first daughter married him. Um, Gado Nasco. Gado Nasco is, is the father, of, uh, the former FCT minister. Yes. General Gado Nasco is the father of the, the, famous the Nasco PDP family. candidate. Yeah, uh, mm. uh, he, he defeated him in 2015, so I'm surprised that the same person that is coming forward. All of these people, their parents, uh, our friends hmm. who met at government college, Bida, including hmm. uh, Gar Garuba Duba, uh, Maman Varsa, all of hmm. them, the protos of uh, government, um, uh, they were all friends. So now it's the children of two friends that are contesting in Niger for the second straight time. Hmm. So, but hmm. I give it to the APC candidate, the incumbent governor, uh, Sani Lolo, as he's called. And finally, for the day, we we'll go to Kwara States. Where Utuge Orikin Utuge is sweeping round. <laughs> Still sweeping. <laughs> it's uh, six months ago, if anybody had told me, because when you check the results of the elections that they've had yeah. in Kwara states from 2003, perhaps, and to anywhere the you know, Saraki family, anywhere they are, how the, uh, the trend That's has always been going, and it's seen like the Capo de Tutti in Kwara states. But the people of Kwara State, actually, the rebellion started. I can't, I can't actually lay my hand to the timeline of this rebellion. But Jide, that's your, like your hood. Well, the, the rebellion had been there all along. Silent rebellion, silent desire, silent wish mm. to kick the, uh, this Bizaraki family out of power. It had been there. But they didn't have enough Seats. enough mm. bites mm. to make that happen. And mm. remember in September 2015, when it was stoned yeah. at the mosque, people were mm. saying, Irwele Ocelleri, Irwele mm. Ocelleri. Mm. That day, the Emir of, of Eloni mm. could I not wait for the traditional slaughter, slaughter of the ram. Of the, ram. Mm. the Emir had to bail, mm. along with Saraki and, and other people. You see that sign? Yes. Well, so so, 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 so sure. Saraki to be stoned in public, mm. that never happened. Mm. And then when you had the local government election in the state, mm. they made sure that they voted against him in even his ward, Hajikobi ward in the learning. Mm. But of course, the outcome of the election is a, state is a different story. Uh, yes, so yeah. the, mm. the APC mm. won. But the PDP at that time were saying that they actually won. You know, <laughs> we have no means of verifying, but mm. at least we saw result sheets <laughs> that they were abandoning that they won. So that was another sign mm. that something big was coming. Hmm. But we never thought that it could be this big. Hmm. For the incumbent, we are thinking that even if the uh, PC takes the state, it will hold on to his senatorial so seat. Say, yeah. But that was not to be he lost his senatorial seat by everybody, wide margin. Everybody in the state. You know, everywhere, oh, whenever he came down from an aircraft, they will, they will be screaming, hey, long line, wallah, hey, long line, hey, long line, hey, long line. Hey, long line. Ah, so the hatred. Hmm. Was building, building, building. Thin line between Thanks that to love. that uh, fantastic uh, uh, slogan, Otoge, the thing spread like wildfire in Amatan. And before you knew it, it resonated with the people across the length and breadth of Kuala State. When that by election came to replace uh, Honorable Funke uh, Adedoni, APC clinched it easily. Hmm. That should have been a sign for people to see that. So his days are numbered. Yeah, no. well, you know, uh, but, you know Yinka, that time. Yinka, yeah. I wanted to ask you, do you think there's a grand plan that, look, it is even dangerous to allow this person, 
make any comeback to the Senate because any, he might get his way to become the Senate president. Wait, let's stop him even going to the Senate at all costs. Well, um, there might be, and there may not have been, but the way it, 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 it happened is that a lot of people, even in the state, have been so aggrieved with the way he was carrying on as the Senate president. Because it became a sort of uh, an identity for Quara that this is the way they behave. You know that uh, Masu Jamba talk, that mm -hmm. this is the way they deceive you. When you cast your mind back to history, the Afonja uh, story and how uh, the Oyo Empire, how he allowed the caliphate to come in to destabilize mm -hmm. the Oyo Empire mm -hmm. and all that. So a lot of people in the state have felt that, look, we must repair our image at this point. So it was a, it was a planned thing right from the grassroots. It is not mm. anything about uh, uh, whether it was at the federal level or mm. whatever. If the federal wanted it and the people mm. don't want it, it won't happen. It won't happen. So mm. it was at the time that, everybody. look, mm. they said that we, we worshipped the, the father, we worship the son, and uh, uh, what is it? Uh, for how long are we going to do this? That was what happened. And it, 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 it Whoever designed that phrase, Otoge, was very, very... Baba Jide, before we go, he, he, he got it. Was, was, uh, he demonstrated uh, his genius exactly. and capacity for mischief as well. <laughs> um, ultimately, APC, this might be APC carries the, the day. day. Yeah. Yeah. Will APC. this mark an end to APA. the empire of Abubaka Bukola Saraki? When in politics, Anything can happen. He may still bounce back. Mm. He may join the ruling party and bounce back. Because whether we like it or not, he's an asset politically. Because he's got, Smart, good, he's got good brains. You must give it to him. Some people don't believe in giving credit to people that they don't like. Mm. You know, but we we have got grown that. How is he's an he, exceptional politician? Yes, you must give it to mm. him. And he's done well. He's done well. If he was in the APC, some of the people attack him today, they would they will not abuse him. No, they, will, they will even mm. be singing songs of praise uh. for him, you know. They will be singing Jala for him, Oriki, all, all kinds <laughs> of songs. But that's the way we are. <laughs> AA Abdurazak is going to be re elected as the governor. The governor of uh, at the expense of um, Honorable Atua. Atua. <laughs> I congratulate the APC candidate in Quara in advance. Wow, and that's our offering today. Olaika Igwile, thank you so much thank for you. the analysis and the mess for himself. We will be back after the election to check those things we pro um, we projected. We projected. Yes. And we see we are, we are <laughs> going on. <laughs> and that's it on Journalist Hangout. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You, you can watch it. Southwest. Southwest, yes. Ultimately, we'll be talking about the big states in the Southwest. I think three states in the yes. Southwest. You can also watch Journalist Hangout on our platforms showing on the screen. And you can also see us on YouTube, youtube.com slash TBC News. Our feedback channel is Journalist Hangout at tbcnews.tv. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. See you tomorrow. God bless Nigeria.